Did you know that we can use the quantum mechanical tools for analyzing the stock market? Let's take a look at this issue in this new chapter. Enjoy it! The branch of physics used for analyzing financial problems is called quantum finance. It has several applications, including, of course, the analysis of the stock market. In this chapter, we will focus on the Black Scholes equation. The Black Scholes equation is the most famous equation for understanding the basics about the stock market. It has a constant volatility and a constant interest rate. Interestingly, we can express the Black Scholes equation as an agent value problem with its corresponding Hamiltonian. Then it takes the form of the Schrodinger equation in quantum mechanics. If the Black Scholes equation can be expressed as a Schrodinger equation, then we can certainly use the tools of quantum mechanics for analyzing its solutions, equilibrium conditions, and others. The equilibrium condition of the market, for example, called the Martingale condition, is then equivalent to the ground state or vacuum of the system from the perspective of quantum mechanics. In previous videos, we have studied the examples of ground states. The bottom of the potential in the figure, for example, represents an equilibrium condition, or equivalently, a martingale condition from the perspective of finance. Another application of quantum mechanics in the stock market is the implementation of the double slit experiment. What would represent a double slit experiment from the perspective of the financial market, for example? A double slit would represent the uncertainty in the prices of the stock or option under analysis. Then, for example, at each instant we have some uncertainty in the prices which we can model as a double slit. In such a case, the upper slit represents the largest possible price and the lowest slit would represent the lowest possible price at some specific instant. Are there differences between ordinary quantum mechanics and the financial market behavior? Certainly yes. The first one is in the sense of unitarity or preservation of the information. The Hamiltonian in the stock market is not Hermitian. This means that the stock market doesn't preserve the information as an ordinary quantum system does. This shouldn't be a surprise because the stock market is an open system where the information is always entering and flowing out. Imagine for a moment a train station. The persons would represent the information flowing through the boundaries of the system. Then there is a permanent flow of information and it is not preserved at all. The second difference between quantum mechanics and quantum finance applied to the stock market is in the definition of the time coordinate. If we want to compare the ordinary quantum mechanics with the stock market behavior, we have to map the ordinary time coordinate to the imaginary line in the complex plane. This is due to the way how the time in the stock market is defined. This is very important at the moment of analyzing the flow of information inside the market under analysis. We can make some final remarks about the Blas Scholes equation. If we imagine the stock price as the evolution of the motion of a particle, then the volatility is related to the mass of the particle in the Blas Scholes Hamiltonian. Additionally, the interest rate enters in the potential term of the Hamiltonian as a trivial constant term. In summary, the financial equations can be expressed as a Schrodinger equation of quantum mechanics. We can then implement the standard techniques of quantum mechanics for the analysis of the stock market. The stock market itself doesn't preserve information as it is the case in ordinary quantum mechanics. The time coordinate in quantum finance for the stock market case is a map of the standard time coordinate along the imaginary line on a complex plane. Finally, if we visualize the stock price as a particle moving all over the space, its mass is related to the volatility in the stock market and the interest rate would appear inside the potential terms of the corresponding Hamiltonian. 
If you like this video, please give us a like, share the link, and subscribe to the channel. More videos are coming very soon. Continue with us.